and greetings from Southern California, USA, and good evening in some other parts of the world. My name is Dr. Emily Letran, and I am a practicing dentist in Southern California, and I'm part of the great global, uh, the Global Summits Institute. This morning, I am here with Dr. Keanu Shah, and he is the founder of the Global Summits Institute and the founder, the visionary founder of the uh, Doctorate of Healthcare Business Program. Um, Dr. Shah is a practicing dentist and an entrepreneur from Palm Desert, California. He has practiced in more than 300 practices as a traveling healthcare provider. As a businessman, he has built numerous co-brands, private labels, and peer-to-peer -peer partnerships in the healthcare industry. Uh, Dr. Shah completed his undergrad studies at Western Illinois University where he earned the Bachelor of Science in 2000, and he graduated in 2006 with a doctorate in dental medicine from Southern Illinois University. He completed his MBA program at Brandman University in International Business in 2016, and he is a fellow of the California Implant Institute, fellow of the International Academy of Dental Facial Aesthetics, and fellow of the International Congress of Oral Implantologists. But to me, Dr. Shah is a friend. He is a great leader. And I am so honored this morning to be speaking to him. Uh, we'll be talking about a couple of main points of our doctorate of healthcare business. And then he's going to share the insights into what he will be teaching his particular course during um, in the program. Dr. Shah, good morning. How are you today? Good morning, Dean Latron. How are you? Thank you for having me today. And hosting the session. Well, you know, it's, it's always a pleasure to to share our thoughts and and our insights on how we're going to change the world of healthcare. So, um, first, why don't you just tell us just a little bit about yourself, a little bit of your personal story, and um, you know why you are passionate about teaching this particular topic, which I like for you to introduce what the topic is. Thank you. Um, my traveling around uh, dental practices and performing oral surgery procedures and things that most general dentists uh, do refer out uh, has enabled me to interact with a lot of our colleagues and kind of understanding the challenges that they face in their private lives as well as their business practice. It's unfortunate that over the years, especially the last five decades, they've been isolated, uh, especially the independent uh, practitioners. So there is not a cohesive effort uh, where there is solidarity amongst clinicians. <clears throat> and that has created many loopholes for third parties to uh, come in and uh, overwhelm us. Um, as you know, a very uh, famous uh, contention uh, is that we don't get to learn much in professional schools, be it dental, medical, pharmacy, optometry, chiropractic and on and on it goes. And uh, that creates a lot of problems for us throughout our careers uh, from the financial perspective and setting us up. And on top of that, you pile on globalization and things are integrating on a, on a, on a vast scale. Um, and it's prudent that we create new systems and new uh, concepts to uh, accommodate all the changes that are going around the world in the healthcare industry. Um, you know, for thousands of years, doctors have guided this industry and it goes back to the Hippocratic Oaths and even before, um, before uh, Hippocrates. Um, our goal is to provide care to patients the best that we can, get accommodated well uh, as a consequence, be compensated for it and someday be able to retire. But if you go through all this trouble and we have third parties taking advantage of us, um, we run into major problems. So there is a program very, very necessary on a global scale that will teach us the techniques and, and the knowledge that third parties deploy um, to uh, prosper and, uh, and um, increase their earnings. And we can do the same as a uncompromising unit. So you were there from the beginning days when we started this program. And uh, look at where we are now. We have uh, uh, international faculty. We have a thorough program, a very, very good idea that will cater to doctors' needs, not 
some generic MBA program, half of the stuff they never use. Um, and today we're going to talk about how we're going to enable our colleagues. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited that we're launching this program this coming August uh, to have our inaugural class. You know, if, if somebody is sitting back at home uh, because we provide this wonderful platform where all of our doctors can learn from home, right? Virtually um, in any setting. If somebody is watching us right now and they're asking you, well, why should I take the time to get another degree, to be involved in another program. Now, our program specifically is about the business of healthcare. Um, so we're not we're not talking surgery, we're not talking new material. We specifically focus on healthcare. What would you say is a couple main reasons why someone should learn about business? And in our particular program, uh, we have a unique track of of helping the doctor understand research and actually. Um, accomplish, you know, a, a thesis in our program. What what would you say are the maybe three points, three main points why someone would want to be part of this program? There's a wise person I I knew that said your net worth is your network. I think that was you. <laughs> no, <laughs> I I repeat some what somebody else is saying. So we are not here just only to give them a second doctorate and, you know, half the business, half the equation in, in this business in the healthcare industry is uh, not only your manual dexterity and the knowledge that you have that you've gained from reading and acquiring and continuing education, but your business acumen, how you deal with people, how you uh, uh, run your business to be a lean, profitable machine for you and your family. And um, so... Uh, just getting a doctorate of BHP, a second doctorate behind your name is, is one thing that will open up many doors for you in terms of credibility. Number two, we have a robust program that even a fraction of the programs and, and, and classes that we offer cost and much more than what we're offering for, but we're doing it in a large basket of information and topics that we're going to provide. Uh, which is going to be very beneficial for the doctor all across the board. And uh, third, you have to understand that there's 15 very high profile esteemed colleagues of ours that have sat down and then taken this uh, approach with surgical precision and how we can accommodate doctors while they continue to practice full time and gain this knowledge. And, you know, I've spent millions and millions of dollars uh, making mistakes uh, that uh, uh, doesn't have to happen for for our doctors, colleagues, until they learn the right way and prosper. We can eliminate that phase for them and bring essentially hundreds of years of experience uh, in this field from the faculty, from a wide uh, array of uh, clinicians and business leaders and experts in pharmacy, optometry, chiropractic, medicine, and dental to bring their perspective to solve these issues that we have in the healthcare industry and uh, pave a path for our colleagues that is uh, proven, um, that is predictable, and that will result uh, hopefully in them prospering in their personal and business lives without being uh, uh, put under pressure to be independent thinkers, to be uh, uh, exercising autonomy. And uh, when you have third parties in the mix, there's already right off the bat, you have a conflict of interest. We need to be free uh, we need to be able to do things our way and uh, we should pass on knowledge that we have or gain to the next generation or we have nothing. We will end up being factory workers uh, uh, for these large uh, corporate outfits that essentially do not have any fraternity to healthcare whatsoever. Their only interest is monetary gain. And they look at us as people with poor business acumen, people that can be exploited people that can be told to run around and do this and do that. And they will crank the wheels and that's for the benefit of a few. For us as doctors, that's not a feasible situation. We have a contract with our patients to care for them in the best way we can. And if we need to increase our business acumen to achieve that, we must do that. We can't just say, oh, we're gonna delegate everything over here and delegate everything over here and just work and, uh, and suddenly, it, goes from do no harm, put the patient first to, hey, let's have $5,000, $10,000 daily hits. 
The money comes when you do the right thing in business. That's essentially the first rule of business. You care for the other person first and you get taken care of. We will teach these precise methods that we have learned uh, um, to make one doctor more powerful than any corporation uh, by uh, uh, looking at these ta techniques and tactics that they uh, deploy. So very informative. And uh, it's all built up on doctor to doctor collaboration. Many of our doctor colleagues have prevailed in innovation, research, lecturing. Some are attorneys, some are accountants, some have other hobbies. And uh, you're bringing a lot of guest lecturers of industry leaders uh, to the table. Um, so a fun mastermind group between doctors equals um, to resolve their issues and as a consequence, create further protocols and ideas and concepts for our other colleagues to follow. It's uh, going to be a very, very fun program. Yes, I and you know, uh, I think the last time we tried to tally up the years of all of the doctors, I think we came up with more than 300 years of experience combined um, in, in different parts of the world. So it's truly a global organization, a global group. And you know, one of my favorite thing is focusing on improving lives, right? And here I'm talking about our personal lives because when you run the business well, when you understand where you're putting the dollar for marketing, when you understand how to build a structure for the business and because you already know the clinical stuff. So, but when you understand how to, to master the business part, then all of a sudden life is better. There's less stress. Uh, we can increase our net income and then we're just going to enjoy life more. We, we feel more fulfilled. And I think that's, that's the goal. That's the main goal. One of the main goals in life is to be happy and to feel fulfilled because you know that you touch lives every day and you can create that impact. So why don't we, why don't we take um, a, a moment? I know you have a PowerPoint prepared. If you can do an overview of the topic that you'll be teaching. So we get an idea of what, what you know, I, I, we, we can see your passion, you know, shining right through, but we can kind of see um, what you, some of the breakdown of your course and, um, and understand more a little bit about what you will be teaching specifically. Sure, I'll get, uh, I'll switch over to PowerPoint, but you said something about a global faculty and a global education system. When we started a global uh, summits institute years ago with our educational programs, uh, we started developing this global system of education. As you know, globalization is becoming a very big deal. Uh, the local and domestic uh, regulatory bodies and accreditation bodies and all of those systems are going to go eventually obsolete. They don't have that much pull or that much oversight when it comes to uh, intercontinental or international uh, uh, relations. So a global system had to be created and we've been working on this for many years as you know i ran into an article uh here let me show you guys that uh the un just issued um you know with uh, all due respect the global degree proposal a new institutional model for higher education was started by us a long time ago not this year um and to create this global degree uh, for example, DHP being just one of many examples of uh, the global programs of education that we have instituted as a consequence of globalization is an example. Even the UN sees the need. And uh, although they're uh, quite a bit uh, behind the curve of uh, creating this uh, system, um, which we have done for, for, for years now, um, they understand it, that a global system is needed, um, that the old is no longer sustainable. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and uh, uh, start with our presentation of the day. Thank you, um, Dean Latron, for the quick introduction and the overview. Here I would like to begin with why we are doing it, how we are going to do the Doctor of Healthcare Business, which is a, a degree uh, uh, issued by uh, the school. Uh, Universal School of Health. Um, the Universal School of Health has oversight by the Hex Commission of the Global Summits Institute, uh, which was the body that will oversee our operations and quality control and uh, uh, similar. So to start off and get everyone oriented, including our potential 
uh, participants and uh, uh, doctors that will be joining us, we decided to do a mini series uh, for of podinars every weekend for the next eight weekends, where we will uh, bring on each faculty to go over their syllabi and uh, explain what they will be targeting, how their course will be structured, what they will be uh, lecturing on, why and how it's going to benefit the doctors. So forget about accounting and legal courses. I have an MBA in international business and half the stuff I don't, I don't use. My accountant is there for me. My attorney is there for me. So let's focus the valuable time that we have in this doctorate program on things that will make your life better, make you prosper. For example, you are talking uh, um, innovations. Emily mentioned that you're talking about research, publications, setting up companies. Uh, you know, you always had an idea of some kind where you wanted to build a business around. You never got to it because life got busy. You had school, you had family, you had uh, other obligations. But now you can use this opportunity to write a thesis at the very end of the program after you get to the, uh, to the modules, the 23 modules that go on concurrently for uh, 65 weeks. Um, you can write a thesis at the end about a business or a product or a service the project that you wanted to execute in life and we will help you shape and form it and bring resources to the table and you'll be plugged into our entire global network you know we just ratified the third uh, um, top 100 uh, class uh, which are strategically positioned uh, colleagues in the supply chain which help us and we help you and hopefully by this time next year we may we may be getting closer to a thousand leaders across the world currently there's over 90 countries involved um, so you come in, you, you go through the modules, you pick up all of the business terminology and, and, and create your business mind. And then we, we move into, uh, we move into uh, more advanced things. And then you'll do your thesis at the end. And you will do all of this. And this is a very important point. While you continue to practice, service your debt, and do this on a, on a three to six hour basis a week. And depending on your faculty and the structure of the course, at times will be coordinated. Um, and I will go over my syllabus here shortly, but every instructor will have a different mechanism. So last year alone, we reached over 3 million uh, colleagues uh, from the healthcare industry that tuned into our educational programs that were complementary. Now, the seal of acceptance that's issued by the Hex Commission is of a Hippocratic nature. The minute you had these uh, uh, global organizations pop up with their multinational entities, and their expatriates and all of these things that really are very questionable for healthcare, uh, we started realizing that these regulatory bodies would stop investigations at some point and uh, say that they don't have any jurisdiction. So we need a global system of accreditation and we need a global system that is recognized by doctors that when they see the seal, they understand that this institution or this organization or this regulatory body or this supplier or this vendor whoever it is operating in the healthcare industry does not infringe up on the rights of patients and does not infringe up on the rights of doctors. So when you see that seal on a company or an organization, rest assured they're being vetted and we make sure that there is no uh, uh, back office type uh, business going on that affects the healthcare industry for the benefit of the few. Uh, uh, no equity taking in doctors' businesses, uh, no empty promises that never materialized enabling doctors to work for other doctors as a stepping stone to their own careers versus these corporate outfits that uh, will turn on us uh, uh, just as they did in medicine and pharmacy and optometry. I feel very bad for our colleagues there. Uh, but we will create a generation of highly capable doctors that can very easily, we're, we're, we're much smarter than any of our uh, uh, third parties that come into our organization. We just need some cohesion, collaboration, and some com comradeship. And I think uh, we will get the healthcare industry back to the orientation that it needs to be. So here's a flyer that uh, Dean Latron uh, uh, outlined, sort of in a general view of what we are looking at. So in order to be able to create a system that truly works you need to go at it from a three-pronged approach. There's got to be an academic, an administrative, and a financial component. But we have three different tracks depending on what interests you 
in terms of do we want to get into the administrative side of healthcare or do you want to get into the academic side or the financial uh, the healthcare industry is industry number one uh, uh, uh industry number one very lucrative they will do whatever it takes to get around the laws that protect the patient doctor relationship to get in on this action but it's not an action for them to get into if third parties want to come into the healthcare industry and take a leadership role of some kind they should probably go through the 20 years of education that needed to get here uh, at a, probably at a minimum um so uh, is a big difference between us collaborating together and us selling out the profession and collaborating with them so uh, uh, let us create super doctors that will be able to navigate or also uh, you know consult with their mentors that they like to make the right decisions in their careers and uh, and prosper so you get to choose an academic administrative financial but the basic of the program like any other university type program you will get your general requirements certain courses that you will go through that we all have to take uh, to get the desired outcome. Now, if you're not, if you're already doctors, the only way you're eligible to get into this program is by holding a doctorate from a school um, in healthcare from anywhere in the world um, that uh, will make you eligible. And we go over the uh, application criteria here shortly. So if you look on the left, if you find programs out there for one of these topics, you'll uh, pay close to or substantially more than what we offer from cash flow and personal finance and, 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 and your, your social media evolution and scientific studies and practice essentials and uh, intellectual property and the supply chain and epidemiology and on and on it goes. But those are sort of falling into those three tracks uh, that you see on the right side, where we try to break it down on the things that we believe are prudent uh, to make a doctor who, who may or may not be practicing uh, continue to succeed in the healthcare industry. I still continue to practice three days a week, and I've uh, created many, many projects, uh, specifically peer-to-peer -peer systems in the healthcare industry to benefit uh, uh, doctors and foremost patients. Because um, when you enable doctors, you enable patients. And I'll give you guys a little bit of an example when we talk about uh, leverage purchasing power, how you fix the healthcare industry that has gotten out of control. And this global crisis is not just in the US or Europe. It's not just capitalism versus free market enterprise versus communism. It's right versus wrong to conduct a healthcare business. Uh, regardless of third party influence, governments, insurance companies, uh, what have you. We have our own rules. And uh, the rules of healthcare were taught to us when we took an oath, not, uh, not by, uh, by third parties. And we have to put those rules uh, in the foremost uh, position, and then everything else comes second. Supply chain and leverage purchasing power. So, companies' loyalty, there's no loyalty uh, when it comes to may maybe sometimes a quarter percent. But at the end of the day, companies want to sell their products. They want to sell their products and services, and they will do so uh, by pretty much all means necessarily. They will bend the law as far as they can. They won't uh, sometimes break it, but they will bend it as far as they can. But let's look at, in this course, on what these executives, these CEOs and chairmen and chief marketing officers do in the boardrooms that enable them to to make the sales uh, um, and then and, and to, to also buy and purchase. Um, so the idea is always in any investment vehicle is to buy low, sell high, uh, to, and then have a profit of some kind. When you go to a company, they operate by the leverage purchasing power concept. They have customer acquisition expenses. So say uh, for one company, it might be 10% of their uh, gross. It might be 30% of their gross sales. When you eliminate that customer acquisition cost for, 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 uh, um, for any vendor, any company, they can turn around and extend you major savings. How do you achieve that? It's usually by volume. So when we have systems that we create where we come in a cohesive way, we have much more of a, of, of a negotiation position with all of the supply chain healthcare as doctors where we can gain the same 
competitive advantages over the corporations by collaborating as doctors and creating these doctor to doctor systems. Ultimately, the idea is that we can eliminate their customer acquisition expenses by coming to them. And as a consequence, they can give us larger discounts or larger um, uh, breaks. And ultimately, when you do that on a large, massive global scale, suddenly the overhead of doctors continues to go down. They will see the same profit margins. And as a consequence, they can fix the healthcare industry, fix more people, uh, create more access, reduce healthcare costs. This is a system that is sustainable. Then we all know that this system is sustainable, but then you have the lobbyists and you have the corporate interests and the third parties that will come up and they'll constantly poke at different components of a perfectly clean and lean machine that could be operated by doctors to, to um, uh, create this environment, this global environment where patients get the care that they need and deserve over sole monetary interest and the doctors get what they need to be able to be in a position to retire comfortably after years and years of service uh, to improve the quality of life of patients and serving humanity. So our course, you know, I'm, we, every instructor will have a different scenario on how they wanna conduct their course. Some of them may not have exams, some of them may not have uh, uh, projects, but exams. And in my particular course that I will be teaching, we're gonna look at the healthcare supply chain management. You're gonna take some of those co uh, concepts and apply them into our small business environment for, uh, for one doctor alone or two doctors, a small group practice of doctors uh, and, and, and the same facility or a couple of satellites, what have you. Different scenarios of different practice management, not just applicable to dentistry, but we're also talking about applications in all healthcare uh, verticals. In my course, there will be a midterm exam because right off the bat in my five weeks that I will have with you, we want to make sure that about two and a half weeks into it, we're reading the materials and familiarizing ourselves and answering a few uh, 50, 50 question um, um, uh, type uh, uh, exam. Um, and uh, we will go on, we'll have our weekly meetings let me go back to the slide. Mm, previous, give me one second here. There we go. So on a weekly basis, we're going to have a, on the blackboard type scenario, you will post your weekly responses and there will be discussions for five uh, consecutive weeks. You will have a final project where you will dissect a large multinational entity that's operating in healthcare. And from public information that you can gather and uh, their filings with different uh, uh, jurisdictions, you will be able to find out what sort of uh, techniques and uh, um, topics and coverage that they deploy uh, domestically and internationally based on where they're headquartered and how you can apply that to your practice. And this will come out of the concepts that will be taught to the five weeks essentially prior. So that will uh, be 30% of your final grade. Grading will be also unique. When we have to submit the grading schedule to Dean Latron, it's a pass or fail. How we grade you internally, that's a different story for you to know. We're not in high school, undergrad, uh, a master's program. We're all doctors. Nobody is trying to uh, put you in a situation where you have uh, testing anxiety or you don't want to take any more tests, you've been taking tests all your life. This is going to be an exercise that is going to benefit you. It's a pass or fail degree at the end of the day, and each instructor will uh, uh, stru has structured their program accordingly. And I'll let you know where you can go and look at the syllabi to kind of gain uh, uh, an interesting. The, lear uh, the learning resource that I'm putting up is just one of many that we're going to be looking at, many articles we're going to we do in our weekly projects uh, that will be assigned also in group pro in smaller group projects that we will be doing. And uh, you will have weekly assignments and your online posts, which will compose about 50% of your degree, uh, your grade. Very simple, very fun. Um, you're going to look at different things and things that we discovered together as doctors, we will continue passing them on in the subsequent classes to come. So it will be a closed loop cycle of knowledge exchange between doctors.
So, you know, we don't like late policy work, but if you contact me and let me know, um, you will uh, make special arrangements. Uh, your makeup and your uh, attendance and participation, it's very important that you participate during those five weeks. Mostly I will organize the times of the courses uh, at a time where it works for everybody on a specific standard time basis, um, especially after hours or prior to uh, patient care and clinical times. But it also depends on what the class looks like and who's tuning in. Uh, we uh, are a true global program and you are able to participate as a doctor from anywhere in the globe um, based on the criteria we have set forth. So we don't take kind to plagiarism, uh, as you will find that you will get into a lot of trouble if you get into publications and you start quoting uh, other people without giving them the proper credit. Um, collaboration is highly encouraged, uh, um, quoting and, uh, and, and giving credit to other colleagues are, uh, is going to be very important in your assignments. And we do this in APA style, it's very simple. During your orientation, we will talk about that. So there's uh, accommodations we will try to do for dis disabled and, uh, and student disability and student wellness. Um, that will be done on a case by case basis. And you cannot have mobiles on or operating during course time. So 91 weeks, within a very short amount of time, you will get your doctorate of healthcare business by earning it. And you will, hopefully as a consequence, thrive in the healthcare industry. So 26 weeks for a thesis. The thesis we're gonna break up, you're gonna have a different uh, committee overseeing uh, the thesis projects. You will find the business plan. You will write extensively on it and different and we'll help you with each of the sections as well as, well as the references. You'll have at least, I had in my thesis uh, over 200 references. Um, so the references will be good. And that's an excellent exercise for research. And then hopefully after you leave us, you're gonna implement it and you will have our support uh, as a collaborative unit to bring it to fruition and to life. Currently, the Global Summit Institute and Dr. Dr. Operation have created 28 different projects led by different doctors that having a similar capacity started with us, got into the system and started taking over a project at another and expanding our global vision. We hope for you to be among those individuals. You can also go on the website, Universal um, School of Health. There is a, a, under the faculty section, you can click on any of the faculty and take a look at their, their CVs as well as the syllabi and see what they have done. We have optometrists, pharmacists, chiropractors, medical and dentists uh, and specialists across the board, all bringing a unique perspective to the program. Perfection is not able to be achieved by one person. Perfection, you, you, well, perfection can never be achieved, but you can come very close to perfection by collaboration. That's about as close as you're gonna get. Um, that's what we're striving for. So what we need from you, um, very simple. Your name, where you graduated from, what degree you have, you're, with any medical degree, uh, um, you're eligible. And uh, you're gonna put your CV and bio and you give us a very short letter of intent that can be typed in here, describing where you wanna be in five years and 10 years. So we can uh, kind of get a little feedback also from our colleagues as you are entering the inaugural class. Universal School of Health is where you find us. Um, it's a very uh, reasonable expense for a, 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 for a doctorate that uh, you will see. We will help not only finance internally as well as externally, but our goal is to make it work and possible for our colleagues to come through here with two years and, uh, and get their doctorate as well as start a business that will continue giving as they, uh, as they head towards retirement. So universalschoolofhealth.com, the more doctors we enable, the more patients will, be, uh, will benefit from this. It is not these corporations that increase access to care. It is, um, it is, it is us, doctors. So when you enable doctors, you increase access to care. 
um, their stories in the papers and all the stuff they published, mortar, brick and mortar, anybody can do that. But going to school for 20 years, taking an oath, caring for patients' best interest, that's us, not them. Let's continue expanding what we have worked on for thousands of years in, in maintaining our autonomy in our own industry. Come and join us, become a super doctor, uh, and uh, let's continue guiding our industry in the right direction. Emily, I yield back to you. Well, thank you so much for, for that particular session full of information um, for any of our doctors who, who are watching right now or who will be watching later to understand a little bit more about our program. I wanna emphasize when you're talking about perfection, I think on a day-to-day -day basis, what we're looking for is progress, right? And, and the, my, my vision of the program is you, you, you sit through the class for three hours tonight or two hours, or maybe it's one hour of office hour. Uh, and then the next day you can immediately implement what you've learned. Uh, for example, we, we'll, we'll kick off with um, business systems, right? Things that the business system that you have to have in your office, the basics. And one of the uh, faculty, one of the guest lecture that I have invited on uh, to to be part of that class is Sandy Pardue. And anybody in dentistry knows her name. She's been around for several decades, and it's such an honor to ask her and for her to say yes, for her to be part of this. Right? Um, it's the first structure education system, helping our doctors grow their business. When you talk about finance, which is another first course. That, that we that we offering personal finance, um, which will be led by Dr. Susan Tron, who is an optometrist. Um, I have also invited my mentor Sharon Lecter, who co-wrote the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, to come in and talk about talk about personal finance and the personal equation of success. So we are very proud that we are bringing in people from other industry, other global leaders, to come in and help us teach really the practicality, right, of knowledge. We're not, we're not talking theory, like you mentioned earlier, you, you had an MBA and some of that information you don't use. Um, I, I did a master in science from UCLA. Great experience. I'm not into research per se, but it builds character, right? Because just like you said, we're going to be looking for how you write things up, you know, plagiarism, which is something very common sometimes, unfortunately, in research people copying you. How are you going to protect your intellectual property? That's another thing that we, um, that we're going to teach in the, in the, you know, financial track, because that's where you're going to build equity. That's where you're going to build wealth. If you create something, you hold certain patterns, um, you pioneer an idea like your idea here. We already went through a little turmoil <laughs> with people trying to copy us. These are things that we can share, we can teach so that all of our individual doctors will never have to encounter that or they'll be better prepared, right? So sometimes you come in with the, with the idea of collaboration and then you got takers, you got people that are you know, taking advantage of you. So how do you protect yourself? Well, even when you go on and do a lecture, how do you protect that information? How do you put things in your presentation where people cannot just swipe and copy it and go and, and, and make it their story? So I think all of those things, uh, some of them our doctors may not even think about, but we're gonna bring that to light so they so they understand. And, um, and yeah, we're gonna do the financing because we know everybody um, have obligations, everybody have already invested in certain things, but this is, I would say this is one project, one degree, one program that you cannot miss. We, I think both of us uh, have invested a lot of money educating ourselves. Maybe we work with consultants or coaches um, over the years. This is our version to fast track you to be a great business owner. And um, I think uh, I, I want to say money back guarantee. If you can't make this work <laughs> and bring back positive ROI, we need some other help, right? Because this is condensed knowledge that have helped all of us become successful, including all the global leaders who are going to be joining us. Yeah, I mean, I've got familiar with some school systems out of Europe, uh, which uh, 
very disconcerting. It's a conglomerate that goes around and has turned the educational system into a profit machine. And all they're looking for is uh, uh, stealing other people's ideas and setting up their own little schools that are not even universities. And they're charging tremendous amount of monies to doctors and this, this doctor brand. It's absurd. We are not after money. Money was uh, never our objective. The reason we are having a fee for this, this, this service and product and uh, school that we are providing is uh, uh, very, very clear in our mission and vision. This is to cover our overhead and, uh, and have the faculty also earn while they're preparing all this material and everybody's out researching and we're using the technology platform and we're creating this global system. So there's some overhead needs that we have to meet for this to work. Um, and it's very reasonable. You know, you go into schools and spending three, four hundred, five hundred thousand, it's outrageous. You go to a mastermind group, you spend thirty thousand um, dollars. We can do this for a lot better, a lot better ways. And, you know, I like your idea. If we can perform, um, then they're not obligated to stay the entire program. Uh, but with our tracks, they're also take, able to take different courses in different times. So um, for the next 10 years, uh, next eight weeks, we are going to be going through each class as a mini series. Um, as a doctor, you can acquire CE units for other things outside of your clinical care, which this mini series is about. So, um, and hopefully they will join us every weekend and, uh, and uh, bring their questions and ideas and concepts. And also when they come to us and we work on the thesis at the end, Rest assured, uh, Emily, I don't know what planet you came from, but you're a force of nature and you know just about everybody that matters, at least in dentistry, you have a line into them. If we can help them between the faculty, we have, uh, we can break down just about any door out there. So our students uh, are going to be our priority. They're gonna be eventually plugged into our networks. And we have many now, as you know, uh, the Global Summit Institute have has uh, exploded. Um, so the value that's brought to the table by them taking this program and getting in the second doctorate, getting their business acumen, setting themselves up and their families for the rest of their lives, um, and uh, uh, plugging into this network is uh, cannot be valued by money. Um, at the end of the day, your network is going to be your net worth. Right, Emma? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can check real quick and, and see if, um, if we have any questions in the Facebook live, if there's any questions that maybe we can answer. Okay. Well, there's no specific question. Some of us in the West coast are probably still sleeping, <laughs> but, uh, wow, but I I'm, just, uh... I'm a, there's over 300 chairs already. People yeah. are liking the content. Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, my my thought for this is I think you owe it to your family to run a better business wherever you're at. Um, even if you are a little bit older, maybe you think, you know what, uh, I'm looking at retirement. Well, there are other views. We're going to talk about exit strategy in this program. Um, we are going to talk about how maybe possibly considering keeping your practice, putting associates in there and make it, you know, make it run like a machine. And we'll, we'll talk about investment. We'll talk about how to leverage your wealth. So it's such a big picture that it's hard to, to explain in, you know, a couple of partners. These are just highlights of our programs. Um, I like for everybody to go to the website, fill out that form, submit it. If you have other questions, you will be personally talking to me. If you have concerns about finances, uh, like, like Dr. Shah had mentioned before, we already worked out with different financing company who can help you finance a program, or we can help you do internal financing. Our goal is to help our professions, um, medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, chiropractor, optometry. We, we have enough manpower and knowledge and wealth to help ourselves. And we're not trying to rule out other people, but we want to stand uh, as a unit, right? As a global unit, but all together, 
where we can help each other grow and we can minimize unnecessary costs, which is part of what Dr. Shaw was just talking about, the, the leveraging the power of purchase as a group. Um, that's just one little part of what we intend to do to help serve our healthcare industry. So Dr. Shah, a few last uh, words of wisdom before I know you have to run off and play some implants. Write your own destiny, join the HP. Um, and uh, we look forward to receiving you with open arms. And doctors are always welcome at the hashtag doctor to doctor movement. I thank you for your time, Dean Latron, and I look forward to uh, 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 participating in the program with your leadership as we grow into uh, much bigger things after DHP. But first DHP, then the clinical stuff. Yes, and thank you everyone for taking out the time and joining us this morning. Please go to the website, take a look at all the information that is on there. Um, you can look at the profile of all the doctors who are on there and, and understand that it's an international faculty. You can look at some of the CVs. I think uh, Dr. John Cryer has 18 pages or something like that in his CV. Uh, these are all leaders in their own right. And they come to this program because they believe in what we're doing. And they want to make a difference in for the uh, healthcare industry. So thank you so much for joining us. And everybody, please have a wonderful weekend with your family. Thank you. Thank okay. you.